Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spud Knocker, as always, and today we're going to take a look at the brand new SA2 Guideline SAMs in DCS World. Today, uh, we got a new update to the DCS World open beta, full of a lot of cool stuff, some fixes for the Hornet radar, uh, addition of the Mark 82 uh, Y that carries a balut in the tail, so you can retard it if you want to. Um, as well as the Rapier SAM and the SA2 Guideline SAMs for the Iranians. Perfect for our Persian Gulf map here. The SA2 SAM is a pretty interesting SAM. It's kind of like your quintessential uh, SAM for the Vietnam era or the 1973 Yom Kippur War or October War eras, uh, as well as parts of the 1970 War of Attrition uh, between the Egyptians, Israelis, and Syrians. So I basically have set up a nice little, uh, kind of a stereotypical SA2 site. We've got our P-19 search radar, we've got our Fansong guidance radar, as well as SAMs arrayed at roughly six points on the compass rows arrayed around, as well as a little AAA uh, site here. The guys manning our SAM site do not look like regular soldiers, so they're going to be IRGC or Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps paramilitary guys uh, operating the SAM site. And we're of course here on the Tarwa. We've got a couple Mavericks and four Mark 82s on board, so we're pretty heavy, so we're definitely going to make a um, short takeoff off of the Tarawa here. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. I'll go ahead and shed a little bit of light on the subject since we are getting a little bit into the darker areas. We will set ourselves a bingo. If I can find the little spinny. We'll go ahead and put that at 3000. Flaps to there. Now we'll go ahead and move our stow stop to roughly, let's zoom in a little bit more, roughly 60 degrees. And that way we won't uh, go fully vertical when we slam our nozzles back uh, once we leave the deck of the Tarawa. Make sure we have our anti-skid set to off. Uh, ejection seat's good. Navigation systems are good to go. And we should be good. So we'll go ahead and bring this guy to 10 to start off. Looks like our wingman back there is ready to go. The updates to the Taro are very cool. I, I definitely missed those while I was away for a while. And we'll go ahead and get started. Staying on the center line. Slam those nozzles down. Gear up, start bringing the nozzles forward slightly, trying to gain some altitude, pull the throttle back a little bit on the power pentagon, it is kind of a gross mucky day here in the Persian Gulf, however it is rather humid. And it is quite cool actually, it's about 65 degrees outside Fahrenheit, and that gave us some nice heavy air for our large Pegasus engine to grab onto and really pull us off the deck of the Tarawa there. And we'll bring it around to our first waypoint, which is also our initial point. We're making our waypoints a bit simple for this one since we're just kind of testing the SA-2. Now, if you read accounts of pilots flying against SA-2s, you'll notice that uh, there should be an awesome effect of a big, big dust plume and smoke plume when the missile is fired at us, and then a nice thick smoke trail as that uh, secondary motor fires as a sustainer booster as it comes at us. So it's a pretty easy missile to, to see as it's coming at you. 
However, we, you definitely don't want to be complacent with an SA2, even though it is a 1950s technology. We'll start cooling down our Mavericks. Throw it into autopilot for a second. Give our wingmen some orders. Oops. Now, we don't have harms, obviously, because we're not flying a Hornet, and harms aren't implemented yet. But when it comes to suppressing AAA sites or SAM sites with more conventional weapons, such as Mavericks or bombs or rockets, you don't want to fly directly at the SAM site with the SAM site on your nose. That puts you at the greatest disadvantage you can possibly put yourself in when, when flying against SAMs. That it reduces the amount of time to intercept for the missile, thus giving it an energy advantage. You want to fly with the, with the SAM sight off to the side, kind of like you're tacking, like in a sailboat, up towards that SAM sight. And that way, the SAM is always having to track you and fly an intercept vector on you, and thus be degrading its own energy state, giving you a higher uh, amount of energy in order to evade that SAM. You can evade a SAM if it is on your nose, and the best way to do that is to simply dip your nose down, fly rough, pretty close to about a 45 degree angle straight down. As that SAM then comes tra down trying to intercept you, you want to then pull up really hard right at the right moment, and hopefully that uh, SAM will fly right past you. There are definitely accounts of uh, pilots in Vietnam defeating SA-2 SAMs that way. However, your best bet against SA-2s or more modern SAMs is to definitely have that SAM off to your side, flying a more of an intercept vector at you, rather than having it straight on your nose. That is definitely a big mistake that I see a lot of uh, wingmen in our wingmen finder group make, is they fly right at SAM sites they want to kill. That is definitely not a great idea. Since we are not in the mountains, we're flying around the uh, Persian Gulf proper here. We won't have any terrain masking available to us, but that's okay. I really just wanted to fly against the, the SA-2 and see uh, what it can do and what I can do in terms of defeating it. I've definitely flown against SA-2s in other games like uh, the third wire series of, of games. So we'll see how it stacks up here. I'm sure that the DCS world implementation of the SA-2 is far and away better. Mavericks are ready to go. A lot of people notice the SA-2 is not in the threat library of the Hornet, or sorry, the Harrier yet. I haven't tried it in the Hornet. Um, so that is unknown. Some people may confu be confused with the new Rapier in, in the simulation, thinking that maybe it's United Kingdom because the rapier comes from the UK. However, that is unknown. I know I would have made that mistake, so uh, I'm sure others would have as well. Or maybe I'm just uh, special. <laughs> have a bit of a crosswind, so I'll go ahead and adjust our heading. We did take off with a little bit of a reduced fuel load to get off the deck of the carrier. So if we need to, we'll go ahead and head to a divert field, which is where our waypoint one is, and that is Abu Musa, which we can see off the nose right there.
expendables are working. Go ahead and arm up the jet, since it's also our initial point. And we can see the runway lights down there. Flying through a little bit of ice and rain as you come through that cloud. And waypoint two is going to be our target waypoint. So we'll go ahead and turn off these external lights. Give our wingman some more room. Go trail. And as you can see here, I'm not going to put our target waypoint, which is where the SAM site is, directly on our nose. And we'll go ahead and turn this guy down a little bit so we don't blow our eardrums out. So it would seem that that fan song is now tracking us. So we'll go ahead and put our nose down and gain some more energy. And we can see Greater Tomb out there at roughly our 11 o'clock. So as Randy Cunningham, Vietnam War flying ace for the US Navy would say, it's a Sam you don't see that will kill you. And it was a Sam that he didn't see that shot him down in 1972. So we always want to make sure that we keep our eyes open and in the outside the cockpit when we're in the combat area, because we always want to make sure we see a Sam launched at us. An SA-2 will definitely help with that because it is a huge friggin' missile with a huge friggin' exhaust plume. So that'll definitely help us out. So far, no launches. Let's see if that changes. Oh, there's a SAM launch right there. So see how it's flying intercept vector, vector on us. And it's now tracking and following us, which means it's expending a lot of energy as it tracks us. So we want to keep it that way. And we'll turn into her. Just like that. And we got a second SAM launch. So we'll make sure we bring it off to the side. And we can see it tracking us. Put potion out chaff, turn into it. So we turn into a Sam, we don't turn away from it. And now that Sam's gone ballistic, it's lost its tracking. But we're gonna keep our eye on it just in case. It looks like we got two Sams. That one's gonna fall short. Same with this one. So you can kind of tell which SAMs are going to come after you and which ones are going to hit you and which ones aren't. And the, the way you tell is if that, from your perspective, if that missile is staying in the same spot in the sky as you're looking at it, as you're swiveling your head, as you're flying uh, perpendicular to the missile site, uh, to the SAM site anyway, if that missile is staying uh, in the same point in the sky, that means that missile is tracking you. If the missile starts to drift left or right, that means the missile is no longer tracking you. 
and so you can make a judgment call that way. Another way you can tell if the missile has stopped tracking you and has gone ballistic is simply just by listening to your RWR and if the track sound or the launch tone suddenly drops out and then picks back up again, you know that the SAM has been dropped and that it's uh, trying to reacquire you for a second SAM launch or a third or a fourth or a fifth in that case uh, that we just flew right there. So now that we've defeated all the missiles and SA-2s are a bitch and a half to reload because it's a giant missile the size of a American telephone pole we know that we are pretty much in the clear now to go ahead and engage the SAM site with our Mavericks and our bombs. Rifle. Rifle two. And we can see by the hits from our Mavericks and those large explosions that the warhead in the SA-2s that are stored around the SAM site are quite large and are definitely going to give you some nice pretty secondaries when you hit it with your weapons. So we'll fly out a little bit of ways here and we'll get ready for an SA for a Mark 2 delivery. Flip on the labels here, see if we can find our wingman, because there he is. And let's see if we can get him to re-engage. So we'll go ahead and do CCIP, nose and tail, quantity of two, with an interval of 50 feet. One thing I have noticed is definitely remember to turn your external lights off when flying into combat against air defenses as well as AI aircraft as they become more deadly if you leave your lights on. And that of course is to simulate the fact that you're making yourself a nice bright target. So we've got our DMT up. We got a nice SAM launcher right here. We'll go ahead and go after that SAM launcher with our first pass. As you can see, it's exceedingly slow to reload an SA-2, so we don't have to really worry about that as we're attacking this site. Bombs away. Wasn't very good target separation with me and my wingman. I didn't even know where he was. So that was quite dangerous, but oh well. Looks like we got a hit. I didn't set up this mission to have any interceptors, so no need to worry about that. But we are carrying some AIM-9s just in case the uh, IRGC down there calls for help from the IRIAF. However, they don't get along so well, so maybe we won't. All right, let's see if this is far enough away to we can get another picture with our DMT. Those are bushes. 
Got a launcher. Nope, that's a tree. So, I did not fly out far enough away to get a good picture. So we'll go ahead and make a 360. So one thing that didn't help with my DMT lineup on that is I got stuck looking inside my inside my cockpit at the feed from DMT too much rather than trying to slew it based on what I'm seeing outside the cockpit as well as what I'm seeing on the DMT itself. So we won't make that mistake again. Go ahead and roll in on our target. You'll notice I'm not flying too tactically. And that is because we do have quite a pervasive bit of airspace now that this uh, SA-2 is pretty much knocked out. So I'm guessing there's probably going to be a launcher in this area. Yep. And we'll go ahead and hit this guy. Where's our wingy? There he is. Right there on the target. Alrighty, time to head home. Alright, so we'll go ahead and get him to and turn on our attack in. Free run x-ray. Enter for our ship. Ship is 55 miles out. And with the magic of video editing, you guys can skip the flight heading back to the carrier and see me make a disastrous landing probably on the Tarawa. So, see you guys in a few minutes. Okay guys, we've got the Tarawa in sight as along with her escort, the Normandy, and we are way low on gas. So, Hopefully, we will not get waved off on our first pass. I don't even know if we have enough to get to a divert field. So we'll go ahead and throw our lights back on. There we go, position lights are on. Go ahead and call the Normandy. Oops, my mistake. We need to call the Tarawa. <laughs> Whoops. These things happen. In the field, one, one, inbound. It's getting quite dark, too. Clear 
So at least the ship lights are on. Turn our water on. For the first time I've landed on ship in a long, long time in the Harrier, so we'll see how it goes. First time I've done it at night. <laughs> it's probably not going to go well. I almost wish we were flying into the sun, but that can't be helped. So we'll take our stow stop off. There's our ship. Whoa, haven't had that happen before. All right, so we're coming up on our stern. Still 2,000 feet off the deck. Dim the HUD a little bit. There's a the ship. Lost it for a second. Oh boy, that was ugly. Clearly I need more practice with that, and clearly I should not have done that at night. But, in any case, <laughs> I'm alive. That guy's probably super freaked out. And uh, the ship looks super beautiful. It really looks amazing. The, kind of the reflections of the light on the island and everything looks really, really great. And I'm glad that Raz Razbam has really put a lot of uh, effort into making this carrier look awesome so I can make myself look like a buffoon on YouTube landing on it. So, thanks a lot, Razbaum, for the awesome carrier, the Harrier, and thanks, ED, for the cool update with the new SAMs. So, if you liked the video, please give me a like and a subscribe, and I would definitely appreciate that. So, fly safe, guys, and have a good rest of your day.